Today we are going to continue our conversation from last week about fitness and fasting and how those two levers or pillars that we have in our trifecta can be very powerful when used together and used together to support one another. My name is Diane Parham. I am the creator of the online course and community, the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman, as well as our midlife mindset shift community, which is a community of women who have graduated from the intermittent fasting course and want to pursue mindset shifts that allow them to continue to look and feel their best and most importantly, live their most authentic life. So like I said, today we're going to talk about the relationship between fasting long and training smart or fasting and fitness. So the one thing that we want to consider when we're leaning a little heavier into our fitness component of the trifecta to aging successfully is where we are in our energy resources. Are we in a storage mode? Are we becoming more metabolically flexible? So we're utilizing and storing our energy sources more efficiently and effectively. And are we doing the things nutritionally and energy wise, even supplementation wise to support the expectations or the asks that we are going to have of our body. Now, nothing should be different for us as aging women or menopausal women than any other group of people, unless you have some very specific limitations that have been put on you from maybe your doctor or because of some past injury that you have had to deal with. We should have every right, regardless of our age and or the season we are in our hormones, to be able to perform at the most optimal level we choose to perform at. But I think what happens a lot of times with women in this age community is that we have a lot of this fear built in around cortisol levels, raising if we do anything that's going to be too intense, or we have fears about you know, health concerns moving down the road, or we might have fears of becoming injured and then being limited later in life. And that's, I think, a really unfair way for us to live our life, especially in this season. So for me personally, I'm 58 years old. I have two grown, very independent children. I am pretty much in this season of life where I have time energy and resources again to be able to do whatever it is that I want to do and as a runner and someone who has been very much in the fitness lifestyle arena my entire adult life like I'm ready to just go for it and this is where the fasting and the fitness lifestyle has really merged beautifully for me I know when to step into my intermittent fasting as a tool to be able to support what it is I want to do with my fitness. And then the health and healing journey I have been on with nutrition has really helped support what it is that I want to be able to accomplish in my fitness window. Remember, we can expect our body to perform and or recover when it's constantly running on empty. We have to have an opportunity to pay our body back based on what it is we're asking of it. This is where understanding your energy levels, understanding your metabolic flexibility, understanding how your heart rate is responding to certain exercises, understanding your sleep, your water intake, what kind of supplementation you need is really important because you, if you so desire, deserve to have the opportunity to be an athlete regardless of your age. So I'm in my heavy season of running this year, the year of 2024. I have personally dedicated every month of the year as an opportunity to run a 5K. I picked a 5K because it is one of those pretty achievable distances for running without me having to fully dedicate my life to training. And it is an easy barrier to entry as far as the distance and the time required. And I have been having an absolute blast with that goal. But I've had to change some things in my fasting lifestyle in order to accommodate what it is I'm expecting of my body and how it is I want it to show up and perform for me with my running. This is totally okay to do. And as a woman who has been practicing intermittent fasting now for eight years and has used intermittent fasting as the sole tool for how I manage the first seven years of my postmenopausal journey, it feels really good to step into this next season. 
Now, by no means am I trying to give off the message that I think intermittent fasting is a bad lifestyle for us to live. But like I said in the last video, I will link that here if you want to go watch that. We have three levers that we really want to live by and rotate through every day. That's our fasting long lever, our feasting well lever, and our training smart lever. We cannot pull hard on all three of those levers simultaneously. Something's going to have to give. And so for me, pulling really hard this year on my training lever, my training smart lever, means that I have to really amp some things up with my feasting well lever, and I have to pull back or pull off of my fasting a little bit. I just don't have the resources available to me if I'm fasting clean 20 hours every day to support what it is that I need with my feasting, to support what it is I need with my fitness. And this is where the mindset approach to how we live this lifestyle is really going to benefit you if you're doing it from a very healthy place. It is okay to take a pause on fasting if taking a pause on fasting is going to get you to that next goal that you say that you want. Now, fasting has created an opportunity for me personally to reverse my diabetic condition that I had very early on in my menopausal season of life. It has helped with the brain fog. It has helped with inflammation. I credit it to the fact that I have a very normal thyroid at 58 years old, like no health conditions or limitations at all at 58 years old and pretty well into postmenopause. I just recently reversed my osteopenia, so no worries with running or doing any kind of physical activity as far as that is concerned. I just shaved off um, about 50 points on my cholesterol, and I know people say you shouldn't worry about high cholesterol. I never really worried about it either, but it was just one of those experiments that I tried with a supplementation that had been advertised as something that can naturally help or help lower cholesterol. So I just took a chance on it for a year and in fact it worked and I was able to lower my cholesterol. Now I no longer have to have that conversation with my doctor and all of the aches and pains and a lot of the things that we suffer with as we start to go through these menopausal seasons of life have all gone away. So I'm in a really prime position with, like I said, this new season of life that I'm in with time and energy and resources to go live my best life as the athlete that I have always been without the limitations of age and or hormonal season stopping me from doing what I want to do. And that's what I really want to encourage all of you to either work toward if that's your desire or to step into if you feel like intermittent fasting has done all these amazing healing things for you as well. What is something that's on your bucket list or what is something that you've always aspired to do or try that maybe you just haven't had the opportunity to and now that opportunity might be available for you if you can in fact step into it. Pickleball's all the rage. Swimming, maybe you wanna pick up some golf or tennis or maybe you're a runner and you've stepped away from it for a little while and you wanna step back in. It is a-okay to change the course of the lifestyle that you're living without creating a bunch of mindset drama about it or saying that you're quitting something. In no way am I quitting intermittent fasting. I'm still using it as the primary tool for everything that I do in this aging process, and I'm using it in the most efficient and effective way to get me to the next goal that I have for myself. And that's really what I hope for you as well. The intermittent fasting for today's Aging Woman course is always going to be the best place for you to start. And like I said, I credit that to why I am so happy and healthy today and why I will continue to be happy and healthy moving into my future self. And as life always presents itself, there will still be opportunities where I will 100% lean into longer fasting seasons. And I will always use fasting as the opportunity to heal my body from the inside out. This is the most beautiful thing about the lifestyle that we're creating here in this community. You have the right and the permission to do whatever feels most authentic to you in whatever season of life that you are in. You do not have to follow regimented rules and this way or the highway type of mindset. You get to do what works for you. The most important thing is that you're making decisions that allow you, the individual woman, to look and feel her best in whatever season she is in and with whatever goal she has for herself, and then to do that in your most authentic way.
So some of the conversations that we're going to be having here on my channel will probably be changing because I am just a different woman today, eight years into my intermittent fasting journey. I hope that what I'm modeling for you will give you hope and inspiration to do the work for you and to really lean into fasting as a very fun and eye-opening way of living your life. There are so many things that I have learned about myself over these past eight years, how I show up around food, how my body responds to food, food that I thought was good for me is in fact not working for me and vice versa. And I never would have had that time and that opportunity to learn those things had I not been practicing an intermittent fasting lifestyle. I always say if you're having a problem with a specific thing in your life, the best thing that you can do to help you figure out why that problem is a problem for you is by removing it out of your life. That is the most beautiful thing and I think the, the best outcome with what we get with intermittent fasting. We have a very scientifically proven reason for removing food from our life for a very specific amount of time and like I said for a very specific reason. Then we allow ourselves the opportunity to put the food back in with boundaries and it allows us to heal from one of the things that has haunted so many of us women for many, many years of our life, and that is trying to get food right, ending the diet cycle, and then finally just understanding and appreciating and loving the body that we have. And that's the ultimate goal that I have for you and everyone here in our community. So I will keep you all posted on my journey moving forward, the days I'm fasting, some of the things I'm doing with the changes I'm doing with my fasting, what I'm doing with my fitness, and some things that I'm going to be changing up with my feasting. One of the big changes I'm making with my feasting is, of course, I'm always looking at my macronutrients and just sort of spot checking them to make sure things are falling in a range that I need them to fall into. But I am going to be focusing a little bit more on my carbohydrate intake just because I'm going to need that energy resource in order to support with what it is that I want to do with my training SMART goals. And I'll share all of that with you as well in case you have similar goals. Thanks so much for tuning into today's video. As always, I love you guys. If you want to see some of the training things that I'm doing and you want to follow along on some of the even food things that I'm doing, you can follow me over on my Instagram channel. The links are down below and I think there's also links up in my about section of my YouTube channel. And you can also follow along on the community feature here on YouTube. It's just the community tab on the top of my YouTube page. Um, if you want me to share more on the community feature here like I do on my Instagram, just put community in the comment section down below and I'll make sure that I repurpose a lot of that content that I share over on Instagram here for all of you who like to stay in one platform here on YouTube. As always, thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't done so yet, I would appreciate it if you would. And then give me a thumbs up on today's video so that I know this is content that you're wanting to hear or maybe you're in a position as well where you're making some changes and I'll make sure that I keep you guys updated. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys next week.